Good morning and welcome to the Charles and Persco show brought to you by One of Bush Live on Facebook and also YTV. I'm joined here this morning with uh, Mark Moore Chins in a Chinese phone book. Charlesy, how are you, Charlesy? Big week for you guys. Good win. You must be happy. Well, Morena, everybody. And, and firstly, any written complaints about that introduction, you can make them out to Anton Persico, what? care of <laughs> Private Bag 49 Masterton. Uh, <laughs> well, then, everybody, yes, it was a fantastic week of club rugby last weekend, and uh, we're looking forward to the, the same this weekend with the kickoff of the full round of competition. Points are back to zero. All clubs are excited by this, uh, and it'll be full noise this weekend. Yeah, cool. Charles, now yeah, we got approached uh, this week by the Lone Star. Uh, tell us a little bit about this and what we're doing. We did indeed. So thank you to Tom and Michelle from the Lone Star. We are now running a promotion each week whereby we're after the Lone Star Legend of the Week. This is the club person who you feel does a lot of work for the club, might not get rewarded as much. What we want you to do is post your name of that person down in the comments below and the reasons why they should win the $100 voucher, dinner for two, with a drink each at the Lone Star. This will be given away each week. So that person you feel deserves it, start posting. And thanks very much to Tom and Michelle. They will be selecting the winner each week on our show. And what's that? That's a $100 voucher, yeah, so dinner for two pretty much. Pretty much dinner, dinner for two at well. the Lone Star, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you very much to the Lone Star. Uh, next up, Charlesy, you want to do a big thank you to Fashion Connection and Master and who um, dress us? I do, I do. So Val at Fashion Connection, uh, she's a well-known figure there in town. And she has actually dressed us up uh, with these fantastic red jackets that we've been wearing for the last couple of seasons. So uh, Val Persico is her name, and she's a lovely woman. She's full of heart. Beautiful She's lady. full of loyalty. She's a beautiful lady. Uh, I don't know how you're related to her, but look, Val, hats off to you. If you need some suits, go and see Val. That's right. Thank you very much, Fashion Connection and Master. Now, uh, moving on to the Photobomb Tony Hardwood competition now. Um, I haven't had any entries through this week. However, the word on the street, Childsy, is someone has gone and photobombed Tony in the showers at Marist after the um, Marist game there. So uh, well, I thought it was a fantastic <laughs> idea and, and probably could have won the $500 straight up. We should have just given it away <laughs> yeah. right then and there. But so, we've, we've heard EO, he's, he's pleading not to put it on. Yeah. So, so please, if you do have this photo, do not post it, but do get in touch with myself or Charles, you may need to Photoshop it a little bit before we uh, put it on the show, but you could win $500. If you're out there and, you hold on, and you're holding this photo on your phone, please get in touch with us. <laughs> this will be epic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit dodgy, though, snooping around the showers after games. I mean, look. It is, it is. <laughs> but anyway, $500 up for grabs. Now, $800 is up, the gra up for grabs. The Pick the Score competition this week has jackpotted. Uh, there were a lot of close people with uh, scores in there last week, Chelsea. Super close in the Greytown Maris game, but uh, to no avail. Look, she's up to 800. Please, someone pick the score this week. That's right. And we're going to tell you what game that is uh, later in the show. Now, um, I'm about to cover college rugby. Um, college rugby. Now, Wycole and Rathkeel College First 15, Chelsea, they play in the Wellington competition. They have got off to an absolutely epic start. Uh, Wycol have beaten Tawa College 21 to 5, and Rathkeel have beaten Hibs 21 to 7. So, what an awesome start for um, our local schools, and also playing against some really good competition in Wellington and winning. Absolutely. The, the competition is very tough for them, but that's a great start for both those first 15. So, get along and support them. Uh, there's a lot of talent on show there. There's some great coaching staffs behind those two teams. Yep. Every, also, every Wednesday night, um, uh, Rathkeel second 15, Waikol second 15, Makoda and Kurunui first 15s, they play off under lights there at Memorial Park. Um, Wednesday has just been, Barbershop Geordie gave us a pair of boots and also a whole pack of um, hair products and, and vouchers and things to give away. Now, that was an epic night down there and two of those, two, we actually give, I gave it to two players because I couldn't choose between them, Charlesy, but Luke Rogers from Makoda, the big prop, had an absolutely storming game. So, Luke, if you're watching, get in touch with us because you've won yourself a new pair of boots and vouchers and everything else. And also, JJ Gillies, the number eight for uh, Kurunui, had a storming game there as well. So, Oh, there's a name, Gillies from Kurunui. JJ Gillies, there you oh, go. Yeah. So, uh, big lad and, and played really well off the back of the last day night. And the vibe around that ground is awesome. It's a great yeah, big crowd and Big crowd. Big crowd. So, get down there and support it on Wednesday nights. Uh, their competition kicks off uh, this Wednesday coming. 
and uh, we'll keep you updated on those games as well. But it's pretty cool to get down there and watch it. It's good rugby. All right, we are going to introduce our next guest to the show, Chaudzi. I think this photo was ta- must have been taken into the Hurricanes game on the bus halfway over the rim of the Tucker Hill. He doesn't look too well. Well, look, he's probably got someone like Dean Gooden beside him, <laughs> uh, looking after him. Eagle-eyed Dean Gooden. But this guy, he's, he's, he's a household name. He's been around our households for 30 years. The Totally Serious Sports Show. He's an absolute legend. He is a legend. Now he's doing some great work as the sports reporter for our very own What It Up at Times Age. It's Morena, Morena to Chris Cogdale. Good, yeah, good Chris, morning, how are you? Thanks for inviting us on. Really appreciate it. And uh, hey, I'm just going to correct you, first of all, Anton, on your college stuff. Uh, Raf Key will play in the Central North Island. And that Hibs was a, uh, that was a, a sort of a traditional game. And uh, they beat, they actually started off their competition by beating St. John's and Hastings last uh, week. And um, uh, what did Upper College won by default over Wainui. And then they played Tawa College in atrocious conditions on Monday. And uh, they have to beat St. Bernard's tomorrow to qualify for the Premier Division. So just to put you right from the start, I might as well uh, get my bit stuck in. Yeah, hey, um, thanks, Coggy. We'll... This will be the last time you invite on the show, but... Um, we might no, I'll, butt in there. I'll butt in there. This is exactly why I've invited him on, invited him on to give the show some credibility. So, Coggy, thank you. <laughs> and I will be um, bringing up some things about what you're writing in the paper as well too, Coggy. But, hey, great right start too. for us. Coggy, it's yeah, been a long time, right, but yeah. it's good to have you on the show. Now, <laughs> I'll let you uh, tell us all about the Wide Upper Bush selection uh, that was selected uh, this week. Um, tell us about your thoughts on this. Yeah, I think it's pretty predictable. I think it's fair to say. Um, I, I was ha- trying to think of players who are lucky or unlucky to be in there. Um, I can't really think of any lucky ones, but uh, Te Aotearangi Aranui, he's a big unit for Martinborough, but he, he didn't show a lot for me against Ekarahuna last week, and he went off injured. So maybe he's a little bit lucky. But uh, when I talked to... Um, I'm trying to think of a coach there, uh, Mark Rutany. Uh, Mark was saying, he said, look, he, he's got a league background, he's very experienced, and he wants to see him have a go. Maybe Sam Morrison at first five, but he is the incumbent. So, yeah, um, so it's worth giving him another go, but I didn't, he didn't show a lot in the grey down game. Um, very unlucky, Robbie Anderson. Oh, I've got no doubt about that at all. I think Robbie should be in there. That's my opinion. Cheyenne Harmon, the uh, grey down winger, I thought he showed a bit. And is the big Martin Barrel uh, hooker, Ty Waite. Uh, he's, um, he's a promising uh, young fellow. I think he's only about 20 or 21. So there's a few to look out for. But, hey, I think pretty much uh, generally what we expected to see from uh, that team. And they're really sticking with the incumbents. But, uh, hey, it's early season and things are going to change, aren't they? Yeah, they will indeed. And I think they're trialling a few players there to see what they've got for this uh, game against Hawks Bay on the, on the 5th. So, yeah, look. What Farry has whited up a bush. I think the standard of club rugby again has improved this season. And Coggin, I think we could be looking forward to a, a very strong squad being assembled uh, for that Heartland Championship. Well, I think Charles, there's is there anyone else who you... Charles, is anyone else who you think should be included in this in this side? Well, I think Ricky Brown has been outstanding for Greytown in the first three games of the season. He is, in my book, uh, been our best player every week. So often underrated. Uh, apparently not big enough, but if you've got a big heart, sometimes that counts for more than a big stature. So I think he's up. Yeah, maybe Tom Broughton from East Coast Very is another one. On big occasions he's a too. Big, big unit. Tom Broughton, yeah, ex-Canterbury. Look, you know, you could, we could go on all day, but yeah. look, the, the selectors and the coaches, they've got to make a call and they'll have a plan in mind, I'm sure, and they'll be looking at those players seriously. As well, fantastic, Charles. Did you want to run through the water, water for Bush draw for this year? And um, it's a bit of a tough one, yeah. Yeah, it is a tough draw. But as I said before, I think the standard of club rugby is is improving here, and with the nucleus of players and and the depth that's starting to be developed, I don't really think that'll pose um, an issue for this team. So um, I'm quite excited to watch this team and how they go this season. So yeah, it is a tough draw um, at the start, but look, I think we're in for a good season for Farriers White Upper Bush. Now, Coggy, I've just got a few more questions for you. Um, your, your sports reporting in the TA, uh, you're doing a great job there. The, the papers are much better read these days since it went to that, that tabloid version. It's much more interesting in my opinion. Could you just give us a, a little bit of an insight into the three two one point system that's been uh, selected each week uh, on the Monday in the, in the sports section? Look, um, the reason I'm asking is that 
some of the selections that are being made, I, I, I'm not sure where well, these people well, that are making them need to be off who the got spec Greytown, or, Greytown versus Maris, who got the three points? Mumu Falaniko from he, Greytown. Didn't he pull a hamstring in halftime? He did. He was very quiet in the second half and went off. Yep. Uh, Paddy Gluck got two and Beachy got one. Beachy, well, look, well, Beachy was cramped up for most of the game, wasn't he? <laughs> I know. And, and look, the uh, scoreline suggests that more Greytown players should have got points than Maris. Coggy, I know you weren't there Please at the game. Explain. Please explain. Okay, Anton. Well, it's quite simple. I mean, I know plenty of your green and white followers, and uh, they're always going to back uh, green and white, aren't they? So I pick someone out to go and do the game for me, and they um, they come back with the points. I can't argue because I haven't seen the game, uh, and I can only That's go with it. But, hey, the same thing came through on a um, East Coast game a couple of weeks ago. East Coast versus Ekaruhuna, and uh, one of the Ekaruhuna guys says, "Did you that, yeah. post me to do those uh, points for you?" And sure enough, it was. And they said, well, they were nothing like what really happened in the game. But hey, that's what happens. It's a bit of fun. It's a little bit different. And uh, in the end, um, the good players, the best and fairest players wash up. And, you know, we saw that last year where Johan van Fleet won it and, and so on. And we see the likes of Sam Gammy and that out and Inia Cartier out, out in the front at the moment. So, uh, yeah, it's all the good players wash to the top at the end. Now, speaking of Inia Cartier having a fantastic season for Carterton and Player of the Week this week in the TA, there was a quote in the TA I didn't quite understand. Cole, yeah. can, you, can you clarify for us, what does Palagi mean? It's Palangi, Palangi. and it is the, it's the uh, Polynesian version of Pākehā. So um, he was saying Aye. we're, all, yeah, we're all, all Palangi out here apart from uh, Daryl and uh, Sam, and that's what he was saying. So, yeah. Thanks for the clarification, Coggy, there. Um, look, I think... We, we might as well have a monetary donation from him. Anyone out there that wants to select the three, two, one in any game, pop your donation in your comments below. The J winning to bid JAB rugby. to JAB Rugby. The, to winning, JAB rugby. the winning bid will be donated to JAB Rugby if you want to be that person picking the three, two, one. You've got up until kickoff on Saturday at two thirty-five today to do that, and you will be the person who selects your game that you go to next week. Okay, what sort of monetary amounts are we talking about? Here? Well, probably the highest bidder. Oh, wins, bit of, wins. 100 bucks, 150. Whatever. Yeah, Coggy's approved this. So yep. you could be the person selecting. So get your bids down below, people. All proceeds go to JAB Rugby, which is awesome. Now, moving on, we're going to cover some uh, games from last week. Um, Trollsy, Carterton, get up against Pioneer. Pioneer scored 30 points in this game, though. They're starting to score some tries, but Carterton too strong, 59-30. Yeah, 89 points. That's a huge score. Uh, obviously an entertaining game. Carterton probably not happy about leaking 30, but in saying that, they nearly scored 60. Pioneer on the improve, and again, yep. we, we believe they'll pose some problems a little bit later on the competition, as long yep. as they can stay injury-free. Well, East Coast get up uh, first win of the season, I believe, for East Coast. 27-12 over Gladstone. Gee, Gladstone is struggling a little bit. Three losses from the first three. Yeah, but uh, again, a club that, you know, the points are wiped now, so they'll be looking forward yep. to the second round. Coast have had a win. That'll bump their confidence up for this weekend, so I wouldn't read too much into that. Stevie Thompson's always got a plan. Right. Eckert Huna, absolutely Thrash Marty up front, 42 to 24. Coggy, Coggy, you were there. Can you tell us about that game? Uh, just too good. Too good on the loose, uh, brutal loose forwards. Uh, Johan and Sam Gammy and um, BJ Campbell, just outstanding. BJ. And they just dominated the breakdown. And they got some talented backs. Uh, big difference made when Frankie Bryant came on for an injury. He's, he's 39 years old, played 80 games for Manawa 2 Turbos. He was outstanding in sorting out the a few backline defensive issues they had. Robbie was as strong as ever, and they had a guy, Matt Raleigh, who scored um, three tries. So they were outstanding. But, hey, look, if Martin Borough get their forward sorted out, uh, they're a useful unit, and I'd suggest they've got an equal, if not better, uh, attacking lineup in the backs. Uh, very, very strong in the backs, you know, with Nathan Hunt, Tristan Flutie, and Alex Priest right at fullback there. So, hey, Martin Borough, no way are they out of it. They're a, they're a strong team. Yeah, awesome. Now, um, I'm told you I'll let you cover the score of this game. Well, Grady won. <laughs> Great Town, 31 14 victors. <laughs> He's so excited he couldn't even say it properly <laughs> over Maris. Well, look, luckily I wasn't in the Maris showers with Tony Hargood. But um, yeah, look, uh, there's a little bit of a rivalry being developed between yeah. these two teams, which is good to see. The game was very intense. It was physical, it was quick. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's a bit of a melee at the end, a bit of finger pointing going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, great good, it's good for, for you for slipping that one in. Yeah, well, look, <laughs> no, I think we just dominated um, territory and position and, and we held the ball and denied Maris position. Yeah. Uh, a bit of ball, so hats off yeah, to yeah. the Greytown team. Uh, we were under strength. Tavita pulled out uh, in the warm-up. 
with an injury, but the the rest of the the team and the club he did and come the on late in the game though. To he played it. the last seven minutes here because yeah. he, he got a bit excited. Yeah. So we put him on. But yeah, look, oh, from Greytown's point of view, we were absolutely wrapped with that match. Yeah. Uh, but Maris are showing signs that you know second round they're going to be uh, ultra competitive. Yeah, they're building, and look, their last twenty was pretty strong as well. So they, they started getting, getting some ball, but um, obviously a a a, be, a uh, a battered Greytown side, which really stepped up as well. How are those injuries looking for this week? We picked up another couple this week, so it just seems every week with the, the collisions that are going on in club rugby now, if you're if you're at home, you want to get down and watch some some rugby where the hits are huge. Watch some what up a bush club rugby. Uh, whoa, the boys are battered every yeah. every Sunday. They're waking up and brutal. They're, they're actually absolutely bashed up. So yep, we've got injuries, um, but look, it's it's like every club. Every club will be in the same boat. Cool. Now that was the uh, end of the Lane Pen Cup. So that's the count, uh, town and country division. So let's have a look at the table here, Charles. Ekatahuna obviously top their division win over Martinborough. Greytown three from three, uh, all bonus points wins as well. So that final between Greytown and Ekatahuna will be twelfth of twelfth of June at Greytown. Yep. Greytown Old Timers Day. Steve Penn, he'll be coming down on the bus yep. with the Ekatahuna Township. It'll and there'll be a massive, massive crowd there uh, for the the Lane Pen. Cup, which yep. is the, the winner of the first round. So it be an amazing day to be at Greydown for, for that mission. Well, we're Coggy. We're expecting a, uh, an absolute hur of a battle. Yeah, we are I now also... Um, sorry, I think sorry, you're going to be really in for it there, Childsy, because they're going to stick it to you, but it's one that uh, I think the purists will absolutely relish. Yeah, and that's... Um, I was reading the paper, Coggy, on uh, Thursday, I believe, and Greytown, Ekatahuna... You've tipped both of these sides to make the final in the paper. Um, tell us a little bit more about this. Yeah, well, I haven't, haven't actually said they're going to make the final. I think they're certainly to zero top points. four, and they'd be um, my favourite options. But um, I, I think there are another three or f- three teams, I think probably Carterton, um, Marist, and I'm trying to think now off the top of my head. Um, Martinborough will, Martinbar will be in the uh, running as well. Um, but from what I've seen early, Ekatahuna and Greydown definitely. There's a good point brought out to me by Neil Roger, though. He said, how do we know what the other side of the draw has been like? You know, so that's going to be their test when they take on uh, Ekatahuna. He said they've got no idea what the other side, how, what the strength, relative strength of the other side of the draw is. Yeah, no, no, well said, um, well said, Coggy. So let's go into the games for uh, today. Now, we've got Martinborough hosting Pioneer um, out there. In- Marty, who you got on this one, Coggy? Take Martin Murray in this game, Pioneer ever improving. I think it'll be an open, free-flowing rugby, so get along to that match. Um, yep. You're likely to see a lot of points. Yeah, I've got Pioneer. I just want, want Pioneer to get up here and just get a win under their belt because I think once they get one, it might be a little bit dangerous. Coggy, your prediction on this? Lots of passion in this. This is cousin versus cousin. They, uh, they've they got some real close family connections. Um, Martin Murray, though, and I think, um, I think Pioneer, they're getting better and they will get a win or two, but uh, they might push them hard. Cool. Next game, uh, Maris, they host uh, Gladstone. Now, Gladstone, desperate for a win or to get their confidence up. Um, I've obviously got Maris on this one. Charles, who you got? I'm picking a much stronger performance from Gladstone in this match. I, I know the Gladstone Rugby Club. I know their players. I know their coach. And they're sort of Maris bogey team as well. And I, they've been a Maris bogey team for years. I'm, I'm predicting this will be closer than you think. Yep. Uh, Coggy, your prediction? Yeah, I think it'll be close, but Marist. Good call, good call. You might be allowed back on the show next week. Um, okay, great down. They host East Coast. Um, Charlie, obviously, you're possibly only naming 21, not 22 this week again. Well, so, East Coast, I love the Coasties. They're full of passion, they're full of pride. Uh, they've got some good ball players and they play a specific type of game which can cause you problems. So, we're playing for the Robertson Trophy as well. Uh, one of my, uh, well, me. Towards, I would call oh, him Richie Robertson. Uh, yeah. We're playing for his, his trophy, so Richie will be down there. It's the Red Eye Cup. Is the it? Red Eye Cup means a lot to me, so uh, hopefully I can put that passion into my team that, and pe- perform on Saturday. I think it'll be a great game and a great occasion down there again. Oh, I think it's going to be a great aftermatch as well. It's always good having Coast in town as well. So I've got Coast to win this one. I think with Greytown being uh, a few injuries, um, Coast is going to come back and bounce back after that icky game and get a bit stronger in the forwards and win this. Coggy, who you got? Uh, Grey down, too structured, too well organised, and they've got too many playmakers for East Coast. Who, if it gets uh, disruptive, if it gets unstructured, yeah, they'll be a threat. But I don't think they're they're good enough. 
Cool. Um, okay, Ekadahuna, this is the game of the round, match of the round for the Pick the School competition. Ekadahuna host Carterton. Um, Chauncey, tell us a little bit about this. I have got Carterton. Well, I hate to say Just. it, but they're in for a surprise. Who? Carterton. They're in for a surprise. So, in my book, the Ekadahuna team is the favourites for this competition. Uh, the players they've brought in, the players are well, they've got Joe Taco turning up as well, but not in this game. But, yeah, they're, they've got a nucleus of a team there that are going to be incredibly hard to beat, especially on their home ground. Their forwards are very well drilled. They've got the loose forward trio, that absolute um, munters at the breakdown, and they've got a fine back line. So I, I can't see Carterton getting near them. Uh, I'm, I'm picking Ikaruna by 20. Cool. Hey, now we're about to run out of time. So, Coggy, I know you've got Eki win this one. Um, you think they're too strong. But, hey, thanks for watching the Charles and Persico show. And uh, just remember, Charles e, what about you, campaign? Drink zero, be a hero. Say no if you're too drunk. You don't need any more drink in you. And, look, organise your ride home before you go out, people. Don't be left on the street. Do that. Thanks for watching. See you at the games today. All the best. Kakite.